Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Southeast Striper Report with our good friend, Henry Cowan. How you doing, Henry? Good afternoon, Mr. Cash. Guess what? We're doing our report live from Lake Lanier tonight. Yeah, I heard you slipped on a banana peel and you're stuck on the dock waiting for the paramedics. Ah, uh, that's not true. I'm sitting here in the Ranger and uh, waiting for, you, for your call, and I, uh, I just took the really nice fish. I mean figures i don't have any customers with me i had to put the boat on the trailer and get something fixed so it's back in the water now and i'm not out here 15 minutes and i already hooked one so lucky me yeah well there you go as they say it's better to be lucky than good sometimes no question i've made my life being lucky (laughs) <laughs> so we were talking before we started recording and, you know, we've got this great warming trend in the Southeast, but we've also got rain and we've got a little bit of moon activity you want to talk about. Yeah, we do. You know, it's going to be, uh, they're talking overcast and rainy the next several days. And if the wind will just lay down and stay away from us, um, with the full moon, uh, this Saturday or Sunday is just going to lead to phenomenal fishing on lakes across the southeast right now this this weather trend is just made for for what we're about to see uh especially on the upside of the full moon and we'll we'll see it again on the downside of the full moon so it it works both ways but if you get overcast light winds and a full moon my gosh you you know you better eat you better eat your wheaties or bring your spinach as popeye would say yeah so does that mean you're going to have bait fish kind of on top and in the coves and in the shallows so we're seeing two two things happening right now our water temp is in that mid-50s range, so the fish are getting set to pre-spawn. There's still some fish in very shallow water. I had a trip the other day, and we, we caught some fish in three, four feet of water, which is my favorite way to catch stripers, just in the backs of the creeks. But we're also starting to see on the main lake, we're starting to see in the river channel, the loons are working hard and the birds are working hard to go. And when you see the gulls and the, and the loons just tearing it up, you know there's fish under those gulls. Even if you don't see splashes, you just throw on top of those loons. And I promise you, with an intermediate line and a little something else, you will catch a fish. They, they will be there. And you may not get it on the first group that you get to, but you know, throughout the morning or throughout the afternoon, the more of those open water groups of birds that you can get on top of, the more hookups you're going to have. It's just It's a wonderful sight to see this time of year. So we have fish transitioning. You know, they all start to get ready to go up river very shortly, but they don't all go up at the same time. You know, they stage over different times. You may get a third of your population going up at one shot, and then a week later, another third, and then a week later, another third, and over three, four weeks, everybody's going up up river to spawn. So it doesn't all happen at once, but it does happen over the course of three to four weeks. Got it. And our stripers like steelhead, so they're waiting for, you know, a push of water coming downstream to kind of drop the drawbridge for them to head up the river? You know, what they're, re- what they're really waiting for is 57, 58 degrees. That's what they're waiting for. It's all water temperature based. As that water temperature gets warm, they just feel it and they start making that run. Uh, you know, love is in the air as, as the song goes. Uh, There you go. And, you know, uh, Henry, we've got a question from Scott, and he wanted to know um, how the white bass run affects, you know, where and how you fish. Well, you know, Scott, I I don't, unfortunately, I love white bass. I must tell you, I am a huge fan of white bass. A six weight in a white bass is about as much fun as you can have with a fly rod. Unfortunately, Lanier does not have a big run of white bass anymore when, when our water got down 20 to 25 feet. We, we lost a lot of water about eight, nine years ago. For three years in a row, we lost our entire white bass population. So they've restocked some, but we just don't get those runs that some of the other lakes and the uh, rivers around the southeast get. But this time of year, the white bass will be going up river with the hybrids. There's no question. You'll see hybrids and white bass going up together. The stripers generally don't go up at the same time as the white bass. You know, usually... One will come before the other. And, you know, for me, the white bass have gone first and then the stripers follow. So I would imagine the white bass are getting ready to go up river. Well, there you go. And, you know, folks, we love questions on the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us or shoot them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. If we read your question, I'll send you some Articulate Fly swag. 
and you're going to get into a drawing for a signed copy of Henry's book at the end of the season. And Henry, I know you're super busy on the fishing side, but I bet you might have some spaces and you probably do have some carp spaces. You want to let folks know where they can find you? Yeah, they can go to the website at www.henrycowen.com flyfishing.com and you can email me from there or you can call me on the uh, home phone at 678-513-1934 well there you go folks you know as henry said the weather is great and we've got a great moon phase so you owe it to yourself to get out there and catch a few tight lines everybody marvin, tight lines marvin, henry. I w- thanks marvin i wish you could see this right now i've got birds going crazy about a quarter of a mile off the uh, port side of the boat that's awesome Take care, guys. Yeah, take care. Bye.